Is this the high production group? No, it's the first lactation group. Even so, they are producing 30 liters because almost all of them calved at the same time. As the carousel milking parlor rotates, a mechanism releases a portion of feed at each position. It's a single dose for all groups. There's no adjustment, but it also serves as an incentive for the cows to enter. They come and want to enter because they know they have feed. Then the, the other group wants to leave because there's also silage at the exit. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. Is this the high production group? No, it's the first lactation group. Even so, they are producing 30 liters because almost all of them calved at the same time. Uh, another important thing, calving is continuous, but we try to concentrate most of the calvings in the months of March, April, and May, but they never completely stop. This means that the heifers, for example, are numerous at this time. So now, for example, this group was completed with the cows from March, April, and May. So we also adjust the diet with them in mind, and even though they are heifers, first lactation and everything, they are reaching 30 liters. But this is also partly due to the fact that they are all between 70 days post-calving until yesterday. So it's a group that will stay together almost all the time. Ah, and the feed dispenser there was designed by my father with a blacksmith. As always, the goal is to keep it simple. As the carousel milking parlor rotates, a mechanism releases a portion of feed at each position. It's a single dose for all groups. There's no adjustment, but it also serves as an incentive for the cows to enter. Another thing we try to do is to encourage the cows through stimuli, the intuitive stimuli that the cow has. For example, now they come and want to enter because they know they have feed. Then the, the other group wants to leave because there's also silage at the exit. So it's like, it's more natural, yes, and if we change that, for example, if we decide to give the silage to that group first, the logistics change completely. That is the cow that is calm and already has a routine and that moves on impulse, wanting to eat, drink water, stay in the shade, and so on. If you learn to manage her this way, management becomes much simpler. These are things you learn by being here every day observing the cows, seeing what is happening with them. How is the feed? Is it pelleted? It's pelleted. Currently, that is, it's not a formulated feed. It's basically soybean hulls. Then we adjust the diet for everyone, and that's it. They eat two kilos daily. That is a little over a kilo per shift. But we always try to ensure it's a pelleted ingredient to avoid problems with dust to not create too much mess with the dust. Another thing we try is to have an ingredient that's included in all diets. For example, the two kilos of hulls are included in all the groups. Then it's just a matter of calculating when deciding whether to add something else or not. It makes diet formulation easier because you already know how much is there. Yes, yes, and another thing is trying to ensure that it's something continuously available. That is, we also look for inputs that we can use for six months, or if possible for a year, even better. Sometimes we used high pro soy, the high protein one, to say, okay, it's there. But then there was a lot of pasture and the grazing cows ended up consuming too much. They might not even need that supplementation. So we switched to another input. This sometimes makes everything more complex. How is the milking routine carried out? What are the processes? The processes we do here are quite basic, also for simplicity's sake. Basically, we connect the cows for milking. The forest stripping is done once a day in the morning, and after that, it's just about connecting. We're considering the possibility, maybe later this year, of installing a teat cleaner. It would be a brush that cleans the teat, disinfects, and dries. But we believe that if it's not done properly, I mean done well, it's better not to do it at all. As you can see, the cows are dry. 
what we really try to do is avoid mud to keep the cows dry and clean. If you look at the cows over there, they're dry and clean. So either we do it this way or we don't do it at all. Right now, we don't do anything beyond simply disconnecting. Yes, the priority is that they arrive dry. Yes, that they arrive dry and clean. Now, if they don't arrive dry and clean, sometimes, for example, when there's a lot of pasture or during times when we use a lot of pasture, there's mud and the cows arrive dirty. In that case, sometimes we need to place an extra person to do the pre-dipping. That is, we clean, pre-dip, and dry. But these are specific situations. And another thing we try to do is size the groups and everything else so that the process is as quick as possible. We always want to do the job well, but for example, this group is done in half an hour. The cow spends half an hour, half an hour at dawn, and the rest of the time is spent eating, drinking water, socializing, lying down, doing whatever she wants. This is one of the fundamental things we try to do, and the impact of this is enormous. Many times we would formulate the diets or other aspects, and the cows wouldn't reach the targets we had set. But now this group is designed to produce 30 liters at most, and they are there between 29 and 30 liters, meaning they are reaching it. And this is largely due to comfort. Well, I took the course in 2021. I think it was in 2022. Uh, actually, I don't remember exactly. I wanted to take it because I wanted to learn a bit more and see the technologies being used in the United States. Learn to use the NASEM and all the techniques involved. The truth is, it has been very useful for formulating diets and dealing with many aspects of management. How to read the feeders, assess barn capacities, formulate diets, and many other things that have been very useful to us. Formulating feeds for the calves, detecting symptoms in the cows when there's a problem. And well, it has allowed us to simplify many tasks do everything more economically and increase efficiency, and also have many tools to assess how the cows are doing and make comparisons. For example, the efficiency of feed use, fat-corrected milk, or energy-corrected milk. And these are tools that I believe are very powerful to make this work. And at the same time, we have a group with whom we maintain a fluid dialogue. Because the realities of each country are not the same. And many times when we see what we can improve or when we have doubts, we consult during the live classes. That's very good. Really, I encourage people to take it. It's technical work. There's a lot to learn. This is something continuous. You always have to study. It doesn't matter how many master's degrees you have or how many things you've done. You have to keep studying. And that seems fundamental to me, super useful.